right. How many of you have your Bible? Hold up your Bible. Say this with me. This is my Bible. It's the Word of God. I'll do what it says I can do. I'll be what it says I can be. I'll have what it says I can have. I'm going to hear the Word of God today. It's going to change my life. I'm never going to be the same. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm never going to be the same. In Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Shout amen. amen. Turn with me to the gospel according to Luke. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. We're going to be looking at those scriptures. Get your outline out of your bulletin, a separate sheet of paper. I'm going to give you some good stuff today. Today we're beginning a new series entitled Cultivating a Thankful Heart. Cultivating a Thankful Heart. Now, I wanted to call this, and I thought it might not be... You might get the uh, wrong idea, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think it's time to make America grateful again. Yeah. Amen. 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 Time to make America not only great, but make America grateful again. Now, some people are offended by that. They say, you know, I thought America was already great, and America was already great. But let me tell you, when abortion is up, when crime is up, when church attendance is down, people are, uh, you know, believing in God less and less. It's time to make things great again. Yes. Amen. It's time to make Amen. the name of Jesus famous again. Amen. And it's time that we cultivate a grateful heart. How many of you would agree with that saying, man? Amen. I heard the story of two friends, Bob and Ernie, and one day they bumped into each other. And Bob looked miserable, and Ernie said, Bob, what's up? You look terrible. And he said, well, you're not going to believe it. He said, um, three weeks ago, a long-lost uncle of mine died and left me $40,000. Ernie said, that's incredible. And he goes, yeah, I know. And he said, and then about a week ago, another distant aunt passed away, and I inherited almost a quarter of a million dollars. Ernie said, wow. And he said, and then last week, I inherited some more money from a, a relative that I wasn't expecting. And Ernie said, well, what's the problem? And Pop says, nobody's died this week. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can get in the habit of having so much that we take God's blessings for granted. Sometimes we as Americans, we are so blessed that we just take God and his blessings for granted. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We become ungrateful. We become dis, displaced. Or, 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 or we, we displace our values. And, and it's time that we become a grateful people again. Amen? Amen. And so I want to talk to you about that today. I um, did a fact check about Thanksgiving, and this is what I found. And we're getting ready to, to celebrate Thanksgiving at the end of this month. We're going to be feeding lots of folks. And, and if you're here today and you say, well, I'm glad you raised all that money, but I can't give any money. I need help. On the back of the seat in front of you, there is a uh, uh, communication card. We want you to fill that out, and I want you to put, I need help. Maybe you have a neighbor that needs help. Put their name and then bring them to church in a couple of weeks, and we're going to bless them. But did you know that in America this year alone, 46 million turkeys will be consumed. 46 million. 280 million Americans will celebrate on that day. Listen to this. Americans will spend over $991 million just on food. 33 million will watch football. I knew that would get some response. And listen to this, 12 billion, that's billion with the B, 12 billion dollars will be spent on online shopping on that one day alone. How many of you would agree that we as Americans are blessed? Come on, you can do better than that. How many of you would agree that we as Americans are blessed? Yes. And we owe it to our Creator, God, for the blessings that we receive. Amen? Amen. We're not doing too bad for what started out as a few windblown pilgrims 
who landed on this place from Europe just to escape religious persecution. And I thank God for them, don't you? Yes. And today we are certainly a blessed people, but we are also an ungrateful people. I don't think it would shock anyone if I said that I believe that our society was ungrateful. There is a people on the earth today, there are Americans on the earth today that have an attitude of entitlement. That they think that it's somebody else's job to take care of you from the cradle to the grave. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is false. God has empowered and enabled you to take care of yourself so that God can be glorified, not the government. I like what Job said. Or, uh, he, or excuse me, not Job, but Abraham. He said he would not take anything from a king. He would not take things from government. He said, because I don't want it said. I don't want anybody to say that my blessings came from anyone but God. And as Americans today, we have great opportunity in this land. As Americans today, we have great things that happen in our lives. And yes, it depends on us standing up and receiving those things. But let me tell you, if you don't have anything else to praise God for other than he, you woke up breathing today, then you have something to thank God and be grateful for. Amen. There was a, uh, well, first, let me tell you that there, uh, the, the word grateful comes from the same Greek word we get, grace. And that Greek word is charis, which means God's grace. And it is the same word we get for, um, for grateful. And this is what it means. Grateful people or gratitude is the spiritual condition of someone who is governed by the power of God's grace. Oh, you, you didn't get that. Let me, let me say it again. Gratitude is the spiritual condition of someone who is governed, led by the power of God's grace. Gratitude is the proof of God's grace in your life. And so therefore, I believe we need to be grateful. Don't you? There was an article in USA, U.S. News and World Report, and this article said people who made a daily and a frequent habit of being thankful were not only more joyful, but they were healthier, less stressed, more optimistic, and more likely to help others. How many of you know we need to be grateful? It's not only good spiritually, but it's good for your health. You'll feel better about yourself. And so today my prayer is that not only today, but this month and in the next year, we will become even more grateful people than we already are. How many of you would say amen? amen. Now I invited Martha Stewart today and she declined. But I brought some ingredients today that... You will probably see on your table stuffing, gravy, and I hope you don't have the canned kind. I hope your mama will make you some. But these are just some things that we have here that kind of represent what we're going to be enjoying for our, our Thanksgiving holiday and our meal. But there's one thing that we need a good helping of, and it says right here. Gratitude. How many of you would agree with that? Because when we have gratitude in our lives, it makes life, as I said, go better. When we begin to thank God for, like I said, the breath that we woke up with this morning, it's pretty great. That's pretty good, don't you think? Most of you here today, you woke up this morning in a in a nice. Or, or you, uh, not a, only a nice husband, you probably had a roof over your head. Thank God for that. Yes. If you woke up with the sleeping bag under the stars, thank God for that. Yes. But gratitude isn't always having the best. Gratitude is giving thanks for what you do have. Amen. And this is what I've learned. The more that I give God gratitude, 
and the more praise that I offer him and those ingredients in my life, things always get better. The, bu the book of Malachi says that there is a recording that God has in heaven, a book on how you and I respond to the things he's given us. Wow, that's heavy, isn't it? Malachi, the prophet Malachi talks about it. You can read the book of Malachi, how there is a book that God keeps records of how you and I respond to his blessings. I don't know about you, but I want it to, I want that book that God has to say about Eddie Summers. Man, he loves it when I pour it on. Oh, yeah. He loves my presence. He loves my grace. And he gives it away to others. You know, gratitude isn't just about being thankful. But gratitude is about passing it on to the next guy. Amen. Have you ever been in line in Starbucks and paid for the guys behind you? That's gratitude, saying not only has God blessed me with enough today, but he's blessed me and I'm grateful I'm going to pass it on to the next person. Amen. Have you ever bought somebody else's lunch, a complete stranger that you didn't know? Or maybe you need to start with buying lunch for somebody you do know. <laughs> Let's not be selfish. Let's be grateful. Amen. What gratefulness does on your outline, it's there in your bulletin. Get it out. I want you to write these things down. Gratitude, number one, recognizes what God has done in the past. How many of you know that it's important to recognize what God has done? I have found that people who recognize what God has done in their past, His power is present in their present. Have you found that to be true? Israel was all about that. When God delivered Israel from Egypt and they came into their promised land, when they crossed the Jordan, God told them, He said, take a stone, build a monument, so that in generations to come, your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren will say, Mommy, Daddy, Grandma, Grandpa, what are those rocks for? And you'll say, oh, there was a day. That we were held in bondage. There was a day when we served as slaves to somebody. But there was a day that God opened up not only the door for us to get out. But he parted the Red Sea. And when we got to the promised land, we crossed the Jordan as well on dry land. Dry land. And those rocks are a symbol of what we are thankful for today. Amen. Folks, we need to build some rocks. Folks, we need to build some monuments. Folks, we need to be grateful and thankful, not only for what God has done, but for what God is doing. Amen? Amen. In Luke chapter 17, we see where Jesus was speaking, and there was ten lepers. And the Bible says in Luke that they called out to him. And the reason that they called out to him was because it was illegal for a leper who, to approach somebody that was well. If you came in contact with a person who had leprosy, then you were unclean and had to go into quarantine till the next day. As a matter of fact, the disease of leprosy was so bad that you had to recognize yourself when you came upon somebody as you had to yell out, unclean. Your name wasn't even important. You weren't, named, you weren't known by your name. You were known and you were identified by your disease, which is leprosy. They had to do that in those days. That was the law. You were unclean, which meant you couldn't live with your family. You were unclean, which meant you couldn't go to church. Which meant you couldn't work a job. You couldn't have contact with any other people. And it was a symbol that God was showing us today. That when we alienate ourselves with him. And we have this disease called sin. It alienates us from things. And God says it's kind of like leprosy. But he brought Jesus. And we just celebrated communion. He brought Jesus to make us clean again. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that? Thank you, Jesus. you see, in the Old Testament, 
dirty things made clean people dirty. In the New Testament, clean things make dirty things clean. People say all the time, they say, oh, you know, I don't want to go around them. Oh, they practice witchcraft. I say, bring them on, baby. <laughs> Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm not afraid of witchcraft. I'm not afraid of witchcraft. I'm not afraid of your, your can, can whatever and your, your curses because God is greater than you. And I'm not going to come in contact. Coming in contact with you doesn't make me dirty. It means the Spirit of God's going to get on you and you're going to get saved and God's going to clean you up because God is tired of leprosy, of sin. He wants to make things clean again. And that's why Satan, the devil, the enemy of your soul wants to stay, keep you away from church. He wants to discourage you from church. He wants to discourage you from God's people. It happens all the time. Somebody gets hurt in church. Things don't go the way they like. A leader disappointment disappoints them. They actually find out that leaders are human. They actually find out that leaders have tempers. They, found, they find out that leaders are uh, react to life just like you and I. And so they get hurt by leaders. They get hurt by church. And so the first thing they want to do is stay away from church. I see people all the time running to the mall. Hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in church in a while. Everything okay? Well, I'm a little discouraged, so I just stayed home. I want to just say, well, that's the best place for you. <laughs> Don't think about coming around God and His presence and people. I mean, healing might jump on you. I mean, encouragement might jump up on you. You know, I, I alienate yourself. That's kind of silly, isn't it? That's like saying, I'm sick, well, why don't you go to a doctor? Well, I had a bad experience with doctors once. <laughs> How come you're not depositing your money in the bank? Well, you know, there was a banker that stole one, so I don't trust banks. That's silly, isn't it? But yet we take the thing that feeds our eternal soul. Church. God. His presence. And we alienate ourselves from that somehow in the belief that we're showing them by staying away. You're not teaching anybody a lesson by staying away. You're robbing yourself from fellowship and the power and presence of God that you and I need on a daily basis to feed ourselves. Amen. 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 If you haven't learned yet, leaders are human. Pastors have tempers. They cuss. I mean, it's Christian cussing, you know. <laughs> I thought that would get your attention. <laughs> but if your faith is based on my experience with God, you have a weak faith. Right? Your and I's faith is in Jesus Christ, and he never sinned. He never failed. Because he was God and man. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. So here we have the ten lepers. They come to Jesus. The Bible says they call out to him. Hey Jesus! Jesus gets their attention. And what's interesting about this story. As you can read about it. Is Jesus doesn't pray for them. Jesus doesn't take anointing oil. And slap it on their heads. <laughs> He doesn't blow on them and ushers pick them up as they fall out. The Bible says that Jesus did something that he's never done before. You know, that's what I love about Jesus. And I'm working on my next book. I'm talking about 50 healings and miracles of Jesus and not one of them were alike. Because Jesus does not want us, just like he doesn't want our faith to be, to be based on leaders. He doesn't want our faith to be based on formulas. He wants your faith to be based on him and his word. Amen. And so Jesus yells back to them and he says, go show yourself to the priest. Why did he say go show yourself to the priest? Because it was the priest that would or has the power to proclaim you clean or unclean. And if you were cured of leprosy or any other disease that kept you from the community, it was only a priest that could give you permission to go back. And Jesus didn't want to just heal their body. Jesus came to heal to reunite families. 
to reunite communities, to reunite people. And so Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says that they all turned and they started going towards the priest. Now, we don't know when this happened, but at some point on their journey, they looked and the leprosy was gone. Now, the thing about leprosy is people normally didn't die of leprosy. They died of the infection caused by leprosy. You see, because when you had leprosy, your extremities, your arms, your hands, your fingers, your feet, your toes would become numb. And then you would stub your toe and you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't feel it. Your toe would get infected. Gangrene would set in. It would come into your toe, your foot, and finally your whole body. And most people died of infection. Instead of the disease, it was a terrible thing. As a matter of fact, they have found recently in the homeless population in Los Angeles, leprosy is making a comeback. Hmm, interesting. I don't think God brought it back, but I think he's showing there's a sin problem that needs to be taken care of. And so the Bible says that as they went, they found themselves clean. And one came back to say, thank you. And when he came back, Jesus said, weren't there ten? Where are the other nine? And he sent them to the priest. He sent ten guys to the priest. And on the journey, one became a priest. By offering his worship to God. The Bible says that's why you and I are kings and priests unto the Lord. To minister to the Lord the sacrifice of our praises. He came back. One came back because he received the healing. Luke 17, 15 through 16 says, Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Samaritans were like dogs to Jews. They still are to this day. You heard about the war in Samaria? You heard about the Jews fighting the Samaritans? Yes, it was very real. But God was saying, it doesn't matter who has the disease of leprosy, whether they're Jew, Gentile, Samaritan, my power is to heal all nations. Come on, my power is to heal all people, to save all people. Aren't you glad for that? Psalm 99 says in the New Living Translation, let's read it out loud together. It says this, number, uh, uh, on the count of three, let's read. One, two, three, read. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the miraculous things you have done. That's our job as believers. People do not respond, ladies and gentlemen, to you by saying, hey, what church you go to? Oh, I go over this church over here. Man, we have big black Bibles. We got Jesus stickers on our cars. They serve the meanest cup of coffee before service. And there's nothing wrong with those things, but is that what draws people to Jesus? No. You know what drew, drew people to Jesus then and what draws people to Jesus now? The power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To say, I was lost, but now I'm found. I was a drunk, but now I'm sober. I was a womanizer, but now I'm faithful. See, what God did in my life, He can do in your life. Because people are not looking for religion. They're looking for a relationship with a real God who, will have, who touches real people to do real miracles. Gratitude recognizes what God has done in the past. And number two, gratitude or gratefulness shouts at what God is doing in the present. As I said, if you don't start thanking God for the past, you're not going to see His power in the present. And if you don't worship Him in the present, you're not going to see His power in the future. And I don't know about you, but I need God and His power every day of my life. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I heard about a guy who was at the post office and he was... He was approached by another fellow with a postcard in his hand, and the older gentleman said, Sir, I hate to bother you, but my arthritis is bothering me. Would you mind uh, putting a stamp on this postcard and 
writing a little message. And the guy said, not at all. And he lit the stamp. He put it on the post office. The guy dictated him what he wanted to say. The, the younger gentleman wrote it out. He handed it back to the man. And he said, is there anything else I can do? The elderly, elderly man, he looked at the postcard. And he said, yeah, one more thing. Could you put a PS? And the guy said, certainly. And he said, would you put PS? Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. <laughs> That's not gratitude. That's being picky. I remember one time we were out giving blankets to the homeless. One day we had we had we had gathered a bunch of blankets. It was this time of year. We decided we were going to go out and, and and give blankets, new blankets to the homeless. And I was out there and I was ministering to people. And I I took a group and we were ministering, handing out blankets. And I'll never forget, a guy looked at me and said, "Can I have a blue one?" Okay, I didn't know when it was cold, it mattered what color it was. <laughs> and it's those kinds of people and responses that say to people, well, this is America. They need to get a job. Well, maybe they do, but maybe there are circumstances that you, know, that you don't know about that you need to give. Because God says when you're grateful and you give out of your stuff, God blesses you. Amen. God is a good God. And I want to worship him in my past, and I want to worship him in my present. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 says, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will to, for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad? Yes. Aren't you glad? Well, I don't have to thank God for the circumstance, but I can thank God in the circumstance. There was a, a Peanuts cartoon where Charlie Brown brought Snoopy uh, uh, dinner on Thanksgiving Day, and it was just his usual dog food. And Snoopy took one look at the bowl and said, well, this isn't fair. The rest of the world's eating turkey and all its trimmings, but all I get is dog food. <laughs> so Sno Snoopy stood there for a few minutes and stared at the bowl, and then finally he said, well, I guess it could be worse. I could be a turkey. <laughs> Psalm 50, 23, the one who offers thanksgiving as a sacrifice glorifies me and the one who orders, orders his way rightly. I will show the salvation of God. Aren't you glad for that? Yes. Gratitude for what God is doing in your life gets the focus off of yourself and your circumstance and puts it on him. It reminds us that we're not in control. It is impossible to be truly thankful and filled with negativity and ungratefulness at the same time. Being grateful makes the enemy of your soul flee. The forces of darkness cannot stand to be around a heart that gives thanks and honor to God. It opens the door for continued blessing. Amen. Amen. It invites his presence. It refreshes our spirit. God loves to give good gifts to his children. And when I'm grateful, if I recognize what God has done in my past, when I'm grateful in my present, it shouts that God is here in my present. And number three, write this down. Gratefulness sets us up for what God is going to do in us. But this is what Satan does. He tries to distract you from his goodness by all the junk you're going through right now. Well, if it wasn't for this divorce, well, if it wasn't for this sickness, well, if it wasn't for this or that, get your eyes off the problem and start getting your eyes on what God has done and is doing, and he will make the better way to start. Whenever you're wanting God to heal your body and it doesn't be, seem to be happening, remember what he did for you one time ago. And if he hasn't done it for you, remember what he's done for your family a long time ago. Whenever I get discouraged, I remember when my sister was nine months old. I was just a little thing. And I remember more of the stories than the event. But her kidneys stopped working at nine months she had a rare kidney disease. The doctor said, there is no cure for your little girl, Mr. and Mrs. Summers. 
My mama came home from L.A. Children's Hospital. It was a weekend, I believe, and she was in bed one night. She was going to Los Angeles the next day to see my sister Vicki, who is here. And the nurse called and said, Mrs. Summers, uh, baby's taking a turn for the worse. Think that maybe you need to come. Mom said, I'll see you in the morning. Hung up. Nurse called back and said, you, you may not have understood, but your daughter, if you want to see her alive, probably need to come right now. But my mom had this assurance that God was going to heal her. She had this assurance that God was on the throne. She came the next morning to the hospital where she was greeted by doctors that showed my parents an x-ray of my sister's kidneys a few days ago and said, now we want to show you the x-rays that we took this morning. Put up the new x-rays. Totally brand new kidneys. <laughs> One. Because God is on the throne. Right. Jesus yeah. is a healer. Right. And what he did for Vicki, at least 29 years ago, <laughs> he can do it for you and me. Whenever, God had, whenever the devil taxed my body, I remember how my mom was healed of breast cancer twice. Whenever Satan tries to discourage me of things, I, I begin to thank God for what he's done in my family, what he's done in my life. I remember the good things. And you know what? When I remember the good things and I begin to give God praise, all the negativity goes because negativity and positive cannot live in the same person. When you're negative, get positive in, the negative goes and vice versa. It's time that we stand up and thank God and become the grateful people that he wants us to be. Because number three, did I give you number three? Yeah. Yeah. Gratefulness sets us up for what is gonna, God is going to do in the future. There's a lot of scriptures there. I encourage you to read them. But let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this season of Thanksgiving, we are grateful, God, that you have blessed us. We are grateful, God, that you have blessed us as Americans. We are grateful, God, that you have blessed us as a church. We are grateful, God, even in the midst of all the hell that Satan has going on around us. But God, help us to think of the positive things and help us to be grateful. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ or you're not sure, the Bible says, if you will, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You can have eternal life. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ or you're not sure and you'd like to pray. Or maybe you're watching on video and you'd like to pray. Can I see your hand if you'd like to pray with me? Is there anyone here today? God bless you. Is there anyone else who would like to pray to receive Christ today? Let's pray with these that want to receive Christ today. Would you say this out loud to God in heaven? Yeah, I, I come before you now. I can come before you now. And I ask, and I ask for forgiveness, for forgiveness of, my sins. of my sins. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. That Jesus, you're my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord. And I believe in my heart. That God raised you from the dead. God raised you from the dead. Because of that, because of that I, belong to you. I belong to you. And I thank you for it. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, touch our hearts today with your gratitude and your gratefulness that this Thanksgiving season will be the greatest ever because of our worship to you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Ron, come real quick. I want Ron to share a testimony. Do I have the hand over there? It is. Uh, Ron, as you know, he's getting up in years, but he looks good for a senior citizen. We're the same age, that's why I'm teasing him. He got out of a skip loader Monday, and what happened, Ron? Is this on? Yes. <laughs> Boy, now he's going to preach. <laughs> um, I stepped off of a skip loader and rolled my ankle. As you know, when you roll your ankle, it's hard to walk afterwards. Well, I continued to work for a couple hours until I couldn't walk on it. Finally had to shut the day down and I was heading home and I turned on the radio and Joel Osteen was on and mentioned about healing and the blood of Jesus and, and so I started, I turned him off and I just started praying the whole way home 
and I kept feeling my ankle getting hotter and I thought it was swelling in my boot, so I took my boot off and came on home. By the time I got home and, and stepped on the ground, I was healed, no pain. No pain. Although his pastor preaches the same thing, but it took Joel Osteen to reach him. Uh, so thank you, Pastor Joel. But thank you, Jesus. Amen. And what he did for Ron, what he did for Vicky, what he did That's for Linda, right. what he did for Eddie, he can and will do for you. Don't ever forget. Three ways to give. They're going to put it on the screen. Thank you for your, the faithfulness of your tithing. We are helping a couple hundred families this year. Not only are we giving vouchers for Thanksgiving uh, turkeys and meals, but we're also cooking a uh, Thanksgiving meal at our Oildale campus from 11 to 1. And uh, we're going to be giving to those that uh, don't have a facility to cook. So if you need help this year or you need someone that does, put that on your communication card. You'll find it in the back of the seat in front of you. Give us your name and your phone number because there will be a list. And then maybe you uh, have enough, but you know somebody that doesn't. Write their name down. Put them on the list and then invite them to church. I'm going to give the best Billy Graham get saved message you've ever